the Revolver case came out in December of 2015, along with the new Revolver weapon that terrorised the game of CSGO until it was nerfed soon afterwards. Because of this, the two Revolver skins contained are made by Valve, since obviously community members couldn't have designed skins for a weapon that hadn't previously been out. Firstly is the SCAR-20 Outbreak by Red. This, like several other of his accepted skins, was the product of trial and error on the workshop, this time with a hydrographic style, which he says is hard to manage, along with the anodized multicoloured. There aren't many cool designs in that finished style, as it's hard to manage the colour composition of the three colour layers. He provided a nice little diagram explaining its complexity. It's not just a case of drawing a pattern onto the skin. The good news is that you have a lot of control over the colours on your weapon. The downside is that you have no way of knowing what the end result is going to look like. He said that a lot of trial and error was required for this finish, and doesn't know how Legrand managed a skin as pretty as the re-entry with it. The Sword Off Yorick by AK Trash Heap came at a difficult time in his life, and said how he had to radically change his life to keep his dream of being an artist alive. The workshop was his opportunity to create something that a large audience of people could appreciate and enjoy. The Yorick was his first design for it, and he was proud of how far he had come as an artist. It was themed to be something that a biker would strap onto a motorcycle, which he came up with from his love of lines and recent thoughts about his own mortality. Originally, the skull faced upright, but following advice from Ego Death, faced it along the length of the gun. He doesn't feel that it would have made it into the game had he not made that change. There's a lot of small line work with this design, and he says that the skull can be more easily seen at higher resolutions. So for you, here's a 4K close-up. He says how the metal is supposed to be brass rather than gold, which is why it wears with a blue verdigris. His personal favourite wear value is actually factory new without stat track or a name tag to get in the way of the artwork. The P2000 Imperial by Ezekiel was created a few weeks before the armour core was accepted into the game. He challenged himself with this design by making a skin for a gun that he found quite ugly. He didn't like the low quality text that was automatically applied to the weapon as though it was engraved, so he concealed it in the shape of the skin, creating it in a lighter shade of gold so that the occlusion overlay would mask it into the rest of the gold line work. The knot work was drawn by hand, then traced over using paths in Photoshop. He couldn't decide on the colour so he picked three different designs and this one proved to be the most popular. He chose the anodized, multicoloured skin style, that's the one that Redsa was difficult to work with earlier. Ezekiel chose it because there weren't so many submissions of this style. He says that any similarities with the Honey Badger's Imperial Dragon and its name are coincidental, and that he thought that Valve would rename them to separate them further. The Org Ricochet was made by Empty, who said that he was just making patterns and figuring out how to make it look good when he settled for this design. This also uses the anodized, multicolored design. It's almost as though Valve was trying to choose difficult skin types for this case. The Desert Eagle Corinthian by Von Bonelli the 12th is the third of his Talos series. It's his only finish without a picture. Instead, it's made with hand-drawn scroll works, and being made of Corinthian bronze, it's the most valuable type of bronze alloy to give it a touch of class. His entire Talos collection comprises of two-tone bronze grey designs, and if anything, this one has the least contrast of them all. The R8 Crimson Web is made by Valve, since this was a new weapon at the time, so there were no community skins to choose from. It shares the same texture as the SCAR-20, CZ and Desert Eagle from the other cases, as well as a number of different knives. It seems to be a go-to skin for Valve to apply to new weapons. I really like this PP Bison Fuel Rod by Endrit, which appears to have toxic waste sloshing about in the magazine. He said how the design came with quite a few issues, since he had to fake the look of actual liquid on a static model. He had to try and get it to look right from both the first-person viewpoint, but also from the side view. He had to put a piece of metal on the magazine to block the view of the liquid along the top side to make it appear convincing from both view angles at once. He's really pleased with how the back of the magazine turned out as well, and says it's just a shame that the liquid doesn't slosh about whilst inspecting it. The Negev Power Loader by Noelle Oeo is yet another colourful design after the earlier Rocket Pop entry of hers. This one was made just a week after the first, but only got accepted 15 months after submission. This, along with the Sword Off, are the two weapons of this style that have been made. The 5-7 Retribution by Caridium was made for the Counterpit League to help fund more online streamed matches and even potentially full arena based tournaments. He got excited at the idea of doing this, not just for the possibility of free stream tournaments, but also for the potential for new live events to be created which will allow for fans from more parts of the world to go and to see their favourite players. He designed this one as though it comes straight out from the 70s. He researched the likes of VHS, cassettes and even home consoles from the day and likes the simplicity of their designs. He worked with the printing capabilities that they would have had back then, and obviously the name was chosen because it fitted the game, the era, and the visual style of the design. The XM1014 Tech Clue Burner is done by PTP, the maker of the Glock Bunsen Burner. 
It came together with no real problems or difficulties. The tech clue in real life is a variant of that design that produces a hotter flame. I'm ashamed to admit that I then got distracted from Wikipedia, trying to find out which sort of burner was the ultimate for heat, and therefore the most awesome. The description for this weapon is similar to the Glock design, and makes me think that PTP might have had some strange experiences with hot rod owners in the past. The SG-553 Tiger Moth by the Honey Badger was made to rectify the lack of SG-553 skins on the workshop, which was apparently to do with the UV mesh of the design. He chose orange because there were few skins of that style around. He viewed the gun from different angles and created a design that would hold up to scrutiny from all directions. He liked the Tiger Moth creature for its dual pattern, which he used for the basis of this gun, using trial and error to get an end result that he liked. He favoured the gunsmith finish over custom paint because he felt that visually it gave him the edge. He then applied the same style to the UMP soon after. From this, I learned that larger weapon models stretch their textures out further, so look less detailed than, say, a pistol would. And from this weapon's description, I also learned that the Honey Badger plays with a high mouse sensitivity. The Tech 9 Avalanche by Guardian Gear is a mysterious design. I asked him about the origin for the Tech 9, and he gave me a mysterious answer. I asked what the story behind the Guardian Gear was, and he gave me a mysterious stare. I asked how many people were behind this project, and thought I saw G-Man straightening his tie in the distance. I asked him, or it, why content for the brand was being dripped out so slowly over time, and he gave me a mysterious silence. The P90 Shapewood by De Puisieu was inspired by real-life shooting rifles, and he spent a lot of time experimenting and thinking about how to apply it to a CSGO skin. None of the skins on offer are fully rounded, so he used ZBrush to sculpt them and to make them appear more rounded than they really were. He then projected a layered wood texture onto it from both above and from the side in complicated ways that I don't think I'm getting across fully with what I'm saying right now. He had only ever made shape woods up to that point when it was accepted, which he says was like the best birthday present ever. Sadly, McSkillet made a video where he said he really disliked it, and he thinks that a lot of people agreed with him on how it's too high class for something made simply of wood, so he doesn't think that it's one of the most loved skins out there. The AK-47 Point Disarray has a custom paint job finish. It's part of Clegg FX's prestigious Series 1 collection, of which three of the 13 have been accepted so far, the others being his Galil Stone Cold and SSG-08 Ghost Crusader. He thinks he got his skin accepted because two of his videos were a huge hit with the CSGO community, and he thinks that Valve took notice of the VR and Danny Treo cutthroat ones. Apparently, the UV for auto snipers is relatively easy to work with, which is why Ego Death chose the G3SG1 for the executioner design. He says the opposite of this is the Glock handle, which is crazily confusing to work with when the polygons are unraveled. The R8 Fade is a skin by Val, similar to that found on the knife skin of the same name. There's not a lot else to say about this design, because Valve did this, a bit like the Crimson Web design featured earlier in this video. The M4A4 Royal Paladin by Tio was a bit of an experiment, where he used a black and white texture and then colourised it directly using the inbuilt CSGO workbench. He believes that Valve likes a non-standard approach to creating textures, and this is certainly that. Other than this, it's classic TO style, with intricate metalwork and an assortment of patterns and textures across the device, using the shiny gunsmith finish.